you hire 91 guys to fire half of them. And the guys that you're firing, they've worked their whole life to get to this point. And you're basically telling them, you know, their dreams are over. And that's always difficult because, you know, one thing about the football players that people don't realize is that they're human beings also. They're people, people with emotions, people with passion. And to play this game at that level that they play it at, they have tremendous amounts of those things, you know? But the Cleveland Browns are here now, and um, it's a bunch of guys that have decided to be accountable to each other, trust each other, but also challenge each other to, to be better than we are right now. We're gonna do our job to get them ready during the course of the week. When we get to Sunday, when it's supposed to be fun, I don't want them worried about making mistakes. Put the mistakes on me. I just want them to be able to play freely and play well. And that's the gist of everything that I'm about. I've never been into like taking on what somebody else says about a person, the perception of that person, because a lot of times that's a misconception. And I only go off what I see, and I see someone that's good-hearted, works his tail off, uh, wants to be told the truth, and can accept the truth. It's not always easy. Godell accepts the truth because I don't think he sees himself as a finished product. That's the thing. I mean, he doesn't see himself as a finished product. And I'm sure if he doesn't see himself as a finished product on the football field, he doesn't do it as a person either. So he's always making strides to be a better person, which we all should be. Now, you're always going to evolve. You're always evolving as a football team. You're always going to evolve as an individual and a person. I'm going to pop up on some kids right now. Drop off some shoes, you know what I'm saying? They out here practicing. They out here practicing for real. What is it? Ch it's game week for them. Cheney, Cheney. Cheney. Cheney? Cheney, yeah. So they haven't had a varsity team in nine years. So they are young bulls. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, yo, yo. hey, listen, listen. Hey, quick practice today. We got another practice tomorrow, but a quick one today. We're about to line up over here on the helmet so we can get ready to take a quick picture, all right? Trying to organize a herd of sheep. was my dream. The look at those kids, having their eyes, the way that they look at me. Um, it's the same way how when I was younger, I looked at Allen Iverson or Mike Vick, Randy Moss, and these guys. Um, and I remember getting to meet them. And uh, you know, they always talk about, you never want to meet your idols because they may not be what you expect them to be. Um, and I just know I never wanted to be that person. I always wanted to be a positive role model in someone's life. So, so being a part of a new community, I'm excited. Like I can feel it just in my soul, my heart. Every day when I'm just waking up, I'm just ready to play. And, and I know that y'all, this is y'all first year playing again. You, you get to leave your own mark and legacy. So I know, I know it's y'all, y'all got game week. I know y'all probably play Friday, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Might have a little, few surprises for y'all. I got, maybe drop these little shoes out to y'all. That go crazy. <laughs> and ultimately, I think when you've gotten to this level, if somebody has made a difference in your life to get you to where you want to be, somebody believed in you, somebody trusted you, you know, somebody may have just like helped you get to school. I don't, you know, I don't know, tutored you. you know, somebody helped you along the lines. Nobody's done it themselves. And in return, I think you owe to pay it forward, so to speak, of putting yourself out there in the community. Because these people around here look up to the Cleveland Browns and it's such a fixture of the community that I don't think there's any way other than to be that way. I feel good. It's a blessing to be a blessing, you know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. I feel like I remember being in them shoes before, you know what I mean? And I tell people all the time, this is the reason I do it. I remember when I looked at somebody in that light um, and just what I could do if I could change their life, I'm going to try and change it, you know? So 
Just came and dropped some shoes off for them. I hopefully they all fit, but. And I hope, Coach, I hope you win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I think we have uh, created an environment here that they, you let people be themselves. Um, and I think we've got a lot of guys here uh, that will play for each other, and they know that everybody's going to put their hand in the pile and pull in the same direction. All right, come back Wednesday, ready to go to work. All right. Hell day today, though. Very good. Break it down. G. Here we go, baby. <laughs> Round on three. One, two, three. Round! Round on three. Real quick, real quick, real quick. <laughs> I already know how he is. <laughs> Me and Coach Al, he'll tell you, like, we always bump heads, you know, because, like, he, he pushed me to the limit, and, you know, sometimes I may get aggravated, and we kind of just bump heads a little bit, but, you know, he's a great coach. I respect him to the fullest, and, you know, like I always tell him, I want you to continue to push me because, you know, you coach great guys. You coach Luke Keekley, mm -hmm. guys like that, so I know what you're capable of, and I know what you've been around, so he know what it takes to get this. The rookies are doing well. They, they've... You know, they're learning the NFL way of life, so things have kind of slowed down a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, what we were, what they were accustomed to coming in and training camp and OTAs, having a 90-man roster. Now we're down to 53. It's a constant work in progress with the young guys, and, uh, and they're learning on the job, and they're doing a pretty good job with it. And, and Max, he's aspiring. He wants to be great. He wants to do good. He wants all the information, all the knowledge. I think we've developed a, a trust and a close bond between us. The thing that I try to develop with the players is a relationship, and I'm here to service and help these players become better. So by doing that, my expectation and standard for them is extremely high, as it is for myself. And, uh, and I'm going gonna, and I'm gonna to push them to the limit and get the most out of them, because that's, that's what I was hired to do. I feel like he see he sees something in us, and we can go out there and perform, so he's always on us. Yeah, I feel like we create, you know, we create a relationship, you know, so it's, I feel like, Coaching player, you know it ain't. It make the bond. I respect him. It though, make the know? bond stronger. I respect you know? him like a like a you know? father figure. You know yeah. he's older than me. He's been there, done that. So we're just kind of like you know, family. Life is just in general is about balance. I think you have to have balance with your faith, with your family, with your profession. You know, if any one of those things are out of balance, it's going to take away from something else. You know, I think it's important for these guys that are away from their families during training camp that they get a chance to see their families, of course. So that's the reason our families come out to walk through on Saturdays. I think anytime you can help these guys with balance, it's a good thing. I know I'm going to stay balanced, you know. I can't wait to get home tonight to my family. but. It's tough during the season on coaches, but it's tough on players too. I don't want them missing plays and recitals and football games and stuff like that. So if they have to run out, they do that, you know? Um, things come up in players' lives too. Just because they're players, they're still human. They're still a person with a family and a family that loves them and they love the family. So things come up, it's life. So anytime I can assist with that, I always will. Where is it? Wait. Good boy. Good boy. Wait. Yeah, we started dating in high school. Um, I was up, on the man. dance team, he was on the football team, super cliche. <laughs> Wore his jersey to some games. Yeah, well, that was my sophomore year. I gave her my jersey my sophomore year to wear to yeah. a game, you know. Well, the, the dancers had Put a little had feelers to... out there, and then and I didn't hear anything after that for a little while, so I was like, oh. <laughs> of course, I gave it as fast as I could. And then I went to go pick it up at her house after the game. I don't remember and, that you did. Yeah, and then she just came out. I was like, hey, thank you. I was like, all right, bye. <laughs> I got this map for Joe for his birthday, and um, it's a travel wall. It's a travel wall. So you take pictures from pretty much all over. The best ones make it. Like this is in London. The top of Mount Elbert that we climbed. Yeah, 14, we hiked up. The tallest mountain in Colorado. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. in, in Paris, France. Yeah. That's in the Dominican Punta Republic. Punta. Yeah, Punta Cana. It's in California, and that's in Hawaii. That was the first time we both went scuba diving and we 
saw a sea turtle, which was amazing. Think. Who took that photo? Our scuba dive instructor, right? Oh, the turtle. It's a selfie. The turtle was like this. That's a selfie. That's Crush. He took it. Yeah. <laughs> These are more Putacana, France. That's Niagara Falls. We took Louis. And He's that was so our. Little, man. Yeah. Yeah, so we got Louis um, three years ago now. They spent a week in Tampa Bay um, that year, and then he came back, and I had spent that week alone for the first time. I just had come from college, so I was. So I had a bunch of roommates and all of a sudden I was alone and I got really lonely and I was like, we're gonna adopt a dog like right now. So we did, the, the, he came back at 3.30 in the morning on that Sunday morning, I think, or Saturday, whatever it was. And then we adopted a dog at like 9 a.m., like right when it opened. And we've had Louie ever since, obviously. <laughs> and he's been an awesome dog and um, he's just a lot of fun to train and kind of, keeps me company all the time when he's in away games and but yeah he watches all the games with me we cuddle he's a big cuddler <laughs> jump good boy uh, speak speak oh, good boy. Uh, turn Louis, turn good boy uh, Okay, this one is what? the Harry Potter death spell. Because I'm a Harry Potter fan. <laughs> so we had to teach. About a cadabra. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a few hours left until I got to go to the hotel. Um, so I just kind of relaxed in the afternoon. Um, the family's coming in. My dad was my youth football coach, like growing up. Uh, my grandmas, I think, have been to every football game I've ever played. So uh, it's just kind of cool. The sport continues and the stage just gets a little bit bigger. So I think they get a little more proud and I'm just happy that they're able to come down and share these experiences. Home games I like the best because all I have to pack is a backpack, but. Don't forget your chargers. Yeah, the big necessities are just making sure I bring my playbook, the iPad, so you can watch a little film if you want. And then just remember you bring your chargers because you won't want to miss your uh, wake up call the next day, you know, so. Where's the bell? Good boy. <laughs> now you're just showing off. Yeah, now you're just showing off. He knows all this stuff today. I think running onto the field for the first regular season game is always, I mean, it always makes your heart flutter a little bit differently. Um, it gives you the chills and really uh, makes a, a special feeling uh, that football is really back in the uh, city of Cleveland. I know there's a lot of excitement this year. It's been a long off season and everybody's just came through camp, uh, competed every day and bonded together. And uh, the tension tomorrow is gonna be palpable. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. This is all about the journey. We're gonna have some ups and downs, but we need to be together when we do this. And I feel like these guys are. I feel like these guys are tight. Uh, we can overcome a lot if we stay that way. We wanted to form a bond between each other that can't be broken. And I feel like we've done that. Now it's gonna be tested. I promise you it's gonna be tested. Those guys know it's gonna be tested. And we, you know, we'll find out what kind of team we have when we're tested and see where we come out the other side of it. And I've told those guys that, they believe it, they've taken it to heart. Now we just go out and play the best we can play uh, and recognize the problem when it happens and attack the problem. Good afternoon, everybody. The wait is over. And here it is, it's opening day at First Energy Stadium today. The Cleveland Browns host the Tennessee Titans. And so we finally see what it's all about. It's been on paper, it's been in four preseason games, but now no more qualifiers, Doug Deacon. This is it, everybody ready to go. We get a look at how good are the Cleveland Browns? How real are the Cleveland Browns?
ever. I came to play with you. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's, you know, a moment that I look forward to, um, you know, coming through that tunnel and um, seeing the fans. You know, last year we lost a couple games that we were supposed to win, you know, and, um, but this is the NFL. Nobody's scared of anybody. Nobody's going to just lay down. So um, we have to win those obvious games that we're supposed to win. You know, we want to win them all, you know, uh, obviously, but um, the games that we're supposed to win, we definitely need them. Father God, I come to you as humble as we can and say thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for all things. Bless us abundantly. Father God, continue to bless us all the gifts. Father God, continue to allow us to use them. Father God, for your glory and your honor, Father God. Protect our teammates, protect our families. Father God, and let us be great in Jesus' name. Amen. Be great, man. Yes, sir. Be great. Be great. Be great. Bless you, Jesus. Be great. Be great. You know, everybody always say, you know, good luck. And, you know, I just think luck is like, it's like false, it's like false hope, you know. It's like you need something else to happen for you to get your job done, you know. And I think that, you know, being great is just, you know, it starts on Monday. It starts with the preparation throughout the whole week and up until the game point, you know. And from there, you're prepared to go out there and do what you're trained to do, you know. So at that moment, it's just, just go out there and be great, you know. So that's why I say be great. I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. Shotgun takes the snap. Baker back, Baker back, Baker looking, Baker firing. Down the middle, got a man, it's Higgins to the three! Outside of the penalties, uh, just, just, just overcoming it. Um, Higgins made a great catch um, coming down there, uh, getting us down to, I want to say, the four or five yard line. And then from there, uh, the trail comes in and, um, you know, we run the ball in on, on the first play of a first and goal. Two off wide to the left, first and goal at the four. They give it to Hilliard off the right side. He's got the goal line. He's in. This one game, you know, I think for for us, we have to realize that we have to write our own story that, you know, some calls we're not going to get in the game and, you know, we're going to have to beat, the, beat everybody, you know, on the road or at, even at home, you know. Um, but, you know, that's one thing Coach Freddie always talks about is adversity, you know, and what happens when adversity strikes, you know, we come together or we separate, you know, and he believes that we have, and I believe as well, that we have a group of guys that will come together. Get over there and get everybody settled down. Yeah, how much? All right, this ain't yeah. Huh? Hey, everything that's happening, you're right. It's all us. It's all us. Come on, they cannot stop us. It's all us. It's all us. Snap back. He's got it. Mariota looking left. In the pocket. Miles Garrett got in there and got him. Takes the snap. Retreats. Back to pass. Getting pressure. Getting hit. He got sacked. They got him. And a loss of 10, back to the 38-yard line. They needed that. Good job. Hey, what I'm talking about? Come on. Come on, keep coming. Keep pushing. I see you. Keep pushing up front. I see y'all. Come on. Let's say we got a little juice going on this drive, man. Get a little juice going. Let's f***ing do it. I'm with it. I'm in. Count me in. Mayfield back, getting a blitz up in the pocket. He's got to get out of there. He rolls left and fires down the middle. It's caught. Landry's got it at the 50, at the 45, and he gets thrown into his own bench at the 43. And the Browns coaches want a flag on the head. And they don't get it. Kenny McCarrow knocked him out. Baker's got the snap, looks left, throws middle, caught in the end zone, touchdown, it's David Njoku! And they're finally back into it with 2.10 to go on the third. Great job, man. Great job.
been waiting all day. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. Derrick Henry, the running back. One receiver left, one right. On first down, Mariota with the bootleg. The Browns are out there. They throw a screen pass back left, and it's wide open. Here's Henry. Henry up the sideline, 40. He's to the Browns, 40, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Tennessee. 75 yards, Derrick Henry. It ain't over yet. It ain't over. Y'all too damn good. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. That's too much damn time. We might beat them. It may not even do it no overtime. You know, like last year, you know, is it they you definitely could look back at a couple moments. Um, Kansas City as well, uh, the Chargers, um, and Houston, as you said. Um, those three games were kinda like like wake up. <laughs> Like wake up, you know, and 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 we answered after each of those games. I think we won the next game, so um, at least the next we one or two uh, games in a row. So it's encouraging. Hey, no matter what, we're, we're gonna grow from this one. No matter what, we're gonna grow from this one. We're gonna wake up. Yeah. Nobody's gonna roll over for us. We gotta do our job. Chubb back into the game at running back now. Mayfield takes a shotgun snap, throws, and he missed Landry, and it's tipped and intercepted by Malcolm Butler. He's going to run it to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, and he hits the pylon along the way, and he's in for a pick six touchdown. And you can hear the boos. The final score today, the Tennessee Titans 43 and the Browns 13. As bad a day as you can have if you're the Cleveland Browns. 18 penalties in the game for the Browns, 182 yards marked off against them. Butler, I think it was, said to me, he was, he was just like, y'all ain't got enough heart over there. You know me better than that. Oh, I know you, bro. You talking about the team. No, we got heart, bro. Oh, we do too. Yeah. He's like, what? You about to find out. You about to see how much heart we got. You know, he was like, I know you got heart, but the team don't have heart. I said, you don't know the men that I'm playing with, you know? And like that, those things are like something that I see every day out here. You know, something that I saw through training camp. You know, these guys battling and fighting, the guys that made the team, even the guys that didn't. You know, it was a hard camp. Um, and guys stuck it out and um, practiced hard, and I knew they were prepared and ready for this. You know, there's one thing about this team, if no one's noticed even from last year, like we never gave up, you know? I think that's in this team too. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry. Hey, everybody, everybody, everybody gonna be looking at us. Don't worry about it. Show these the way. Show them the way. Lead, lead, lead. Even when it hurt, even when it hurt, lead. I love you. Healthy? Yeah, don't define us. Yeah, you healthy? Good. Just put it behind us as quickly as we can, and we got back in here today, watch film. Um, you know, we head into the next week, going against the Jets on uh, Monday night. Um, again, atmosphere is going to be crazy, and you know we got to go out there and make plays and not hurt ourselves. And I think we got a pretty good chance. Go, yeah, yeah. Go, get back to it. Ov, you good? Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Of course, uh, that's not the way we want to be represented, but it's one game and we're going to be tested. Adversity, you either, you take adversity and you either run together, run toward each other, or you run away. And I think we've got a bunch of guys who are going to run toward each other and we're going to be fine. Everybody's going to keep believing in the locker room. That's the only thing that matters. That's the only thing that's ever mattered. And uh, we'll move forward and get better from this. For more great Browns videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button below.